Hi everybody, this is Claude Sander with Taurus. Uh, I just got the instructions through the webinar that everybody is in listen only mode. Um, uh, welcome, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're going to talk about seed fertility, talk about active prime and active PLS that you know goes in great conjunction with what we have with what Mike has been doing on the other webinars if you haven't seen it. So just take a closer look at the benefits of seed health, uh, nutrition and biostimulants and what they can offer. Um, I guess before we start, I did want to wish everybody well. I know this is these are uh, crazy times, uh, financially, uh, socially, uh, you name it. So I hope everybody's doing well, and I'm. I hope uh, you know things coming to an end soon, and we can get back get back to acting like we have been, uh, or somewhat like we have been, and so. Everybody take care out there, and if you've run into some issues, I, I hope uh, things go better for you. So take care, and we'll start up. So welcome to Agronomy Week with uh, Taurus. Uh, you know, one of the things we, we thought about is uh, a lot of us are tied into a home office or in our, in our, in our retails or on a farm, and we thought about what, what can we do to maybe help you know, get people looking, listening, learning. Uh, so we've got a number of webinars coming on. If you have, if you've missed some of our webinars, you can still watch them. There's one coming up again tomorrow on Friday. And you can visit our our blog and resource section at uh, www.taurus.ag. Uh, the little arrow there shows where the resource section is, and you can watch all our videos. Um, you know, if you do the YouTube thing, follow us along on YouTube. That's where you'll see all those videos. If you're a Twitter Twitter person. Do the, the Twitter uh, at Taurus Ag Team. If you're doing LinkedIn, follow us on there if you wish. And we also have a Facebook. And look, lo and behold, we have an Instagram, which I'm not uh, real versed in, but we got some technical people who are. So lo and behold, let's let's get started. So vision of Taurus here is, I guess. What we consider is every bushel has a consumer joint story. And I think the mindset behind that we want to leave with, uh, you know, any, any farmer or anybody who's dealing with farming, and the mindset is to take care of your land and, and, and take care of the, the, the food that comes off that land. And, and we believe that we offer some, some really exciting products that can offer that story to the person who, the consumer, the person who's eating that bread or, was eating the egg that the chicken, the feed that the chicken ate, uh, that it has a, a story behind it that, that that consumer goes, geez, I'm dealing with these Western Canadian egg folks and I'm eating their food and it, they are doing things, you know, right. You know, there's so many things that we do good on our farms as Western Canadian farmers. You know, let's, let's just keep uh, sharing that story and we'll do our part to, to make sure that we can increase that story wherever, every step we can. So, that is the vision of, of Taurus is to make sure that we are, you know, helping you uh, tell your story uh, to the consumer. So what are we talking about here today? Um, I guess the way I looked at it and the way I've always looked at it with, um, you know, talking to customers, retailers, growers is, you know, we, we spend, uh, we do our soil tests uh, every year. A lot of people do soil tests. Uh, at the end of the day, what we're doing is we're trying to find a, a good, strong fertility pro program to, to grow the best, strongest, healthiest plants to give us the best yield at the end of the day. And being on, on this side of the business also, uh, you know, talking about seed, we do a lot of stuff with seed, is if you're not, should, should we not be applying this same mindset to our seed, you know, applying that best nutrition? Uh, you know, there's a lot of dollars are spent on prescription farming to ensure that we put the right fertility in the right spot. But how much time do we spend looking at or uh, diving into our seeds to see what nutritional values in the seed is, is what are the best seeds to use? It, you know, it's where can we, how can we make our seeds better? And that's kind of the story I'm going to tell today is what, can, what are the things we can do to help, uh, you know, have our seed be the best seed it can be. So I think there's some, and it's, it's an economical mindset that I think we can go down that path. Webinars are always funny because no, you don't get any feedback. So you don't know if people are have fallen asleep or not. So it's always it's always interesting being aside hearing crickets. <laughs> so uh, bear with me if uh, so. Uh, thoughts on seed optimization. Here's some thoughts that we'll talk about today. 
So it's no secret that seeds need and use nutrients to grow. No different than a cow, a human, a tree. Every seed has a need for certain nutrients and obviously no different than, than us. The better we eat, the better off, the healthier we are and the stronger we grow and the, any seed that has the best nutrients will be the best seed. Every seed has its own unique story. Let's, we'll dive into that a bit. What, is that, what does that look like? Uh, what value does seed nutrition provide? What, what, are the, uh, what are the options you can do to improve that, increase that, that, that seed story, that unique story? How do, we, how do we make that unique story be not as, as unique, but be the best story that we can tell for that seed? Should we be thinking about biostimulants? I'll dive into a little bit about biostimulants and, and the mindset around that and why we, we would have a biostimulant in our, in our seed primers. What are my options? We'll talk about the two options that we have here at Taurus and uh, for seed, seed primer, seed dressing, and, and why, the, why we believe those are sound options. So you've probably seen different uh, scenarios of this, the, the yield gap, um, you know, the actual yield versus uh, what you can grow to the attainable yield based on the ultimate nutrients, uh, the best seed, the, the right amount of water, the right time, the limited disease, and then the ultimate potential. So, you know, there's there's a, a big gap from from here to here. Um, where does that gap come from? You know, we have the average yield. Corn, wheat, soybean, sorghum, oats, and barley. So there's average yield, and what where do we miss out on this yield? Where does it come from? Biotic stress, biotic losses, and abiotic losses. Abiotic losses are way in a hold the biggest amount of losses that that can can come to you taking away from that advantage. So when it comes to seeding, when it comes to seed variability is a guarantee. You look across the field, you see field variability, and with that you see you know soil testing, pHs, uh, base saturation. There's a lot of different variabilities when it comes to seed and where that seed comes from. So to have every seed perform the same based on a, on a variable field, it's obviously that mindset is it's every seed can't be the same. You know, speaking of something like wheat, you have the main head, you have tillers, you have, you have different, uh, different way that, we, that wheat is matured when we combine it based on that maturity. So there's variability is a guarantee there. You have looking at just the wheat head, a great picture of, of, a, of a main head and a tiller. Look at the difference of those those seeds. Uh, how can you uh, how can you see that a seeds coming from this part of the plant versus seeds coming from this? If you can't clean those out when you're getting your seed ready, those seeds are going to have a different background. You know, taking those seeds that's a such a neat picture. Taking the seeds, Mike Delinsky's got some great pictures here, and this is the pictures of those seeds. Look look at the difference in some of these seeds. Uh, the big healthy seeds come in the middle of that head and then it fills fills out this way and that way fills out this way and that way so the seeds in here are probably going to be your ultimately best seeds so if we can go run around the field and capture these seeds uh, from our wheat heads we'll put us in a great spot for seed next year and that's the same for any plant so a lot of seed variability and so that's i call it the, the variability is a guarantee when it comes to difference in seeds so how do we test our seed because why? Why do we do it? Uh, the first one jumped up there. Obviously we want to know the germination. We want to know what percent of these seeds are going to germinate. So we send our seeds away to the lab and we find out, uh, are we 90, 80 or 70 or is it too low to even use? We want to know if there's any disease on that seed. We want to know if, if we need to get uh, different types of seed treatments. What's the best seed treatment for those diseases uh, based on the crop? Uh, based on, on what we're seeing, how, how can we even use that seed if the disease is too high? We want to know the, the vigor. Apologize for the spelling. I guess vigor could be either with the U or with the O, but we want to know the vigor of that seed. How important is that vigor? Well, vigor is really important when it comes to challenges. Uh, and Our seeds face a number of challenges as they grow. So knowing the vigor can really help us understand how is that seed going to be handled in you know, our, some of our toughest conditions? You know, I've been talking to some of our, our other Taurus people, and you know, there's some areas that might be seeding fairly soon. Well, it, 
last time I checked, the only day that's above 10 degrees is on I think Sunday, they said, or I don't even know if it's above 10, but you know, April and even May can be cold days. We want to know the nutrition we have to start with. You know, have we spent enough attention to know the nutrition of our seeds and how important that nutrition is? So we, we've spent some time obviously looking at the nutrition of the seed and how important that nutrition is. Here's a neat shot that I got from Mike on a wheat seed, looking at the inside of that wheat seed. Embryo is where that starts growing. You can see some leaves in there. The scutellum is where it brings in the nutrients. So if that seed's got full of the best nutrients, it can grow that best, best plant. So what are the roles of the different nutrients in the seed? I'm not going over all the nutrients. Uh, I don't have nitrogen on here. Nitrogen is obviously a key element uh, for growth of a seed. And some of the ones I have on here is just talking about zinc. Zinc is essential to help break the seed dormancy, influences productions of auxins. Manganese helps with cell development and it's crucial in the first 14 days to accelerate germination. Phosphorus, no, no secret with phosphorus. You know, rapid germination, obviously that's where the energy comes in. Uh, you know, boron seeds with low boron could mean that that seed uh, has been damaged. So, you know, cell cell integrity. Calcium, calcium is super important when it comes to cell structure, cell formation. Lack of calcium can hurt your your plants from creating new healthy tissue going forward. Now, uh, potassium, potassium is very important as it activates a lot of different enzymes that get that plant to really fire off and break down all the different amino acids so it can can grow and, and act properly. You know, it's, it's you know, if you ever, uh, you know, one of the things that maybe comes to mindset is looking at nutrition and seed, and there's it's it's tough to find really good information on different nutrition inside of a seed. Now, this is a kind of a neat uh, and one of a very few that you can find is talking about parts of a grain. In this case, it's a wheat grain, and looking at the embryo, endosperm, and seed coat. Look at the differences of the different nutrients. The embryo has probably got overall some of the least total nutrients in it, but some of the key ones come up. Phosphorus, zinc is important in there. Manganese, boron. Lo and behold, the screen before this talked about those key elements. And as you go through the endosperm, lots of dry matter, lots of good energy in there. Phosphorus is up. And then as we go from endosperm to seed coat, look at the difference in the seed coat. Manganese goes from 13 to 81, zinc 23, Copper 33 to 60, boron 31 to 57. So some lots of good nutrition in that seed. So this is, you know, so I think maybe we're missing on some of the importance of seed. Seed is the beginning of of that crop, and we need to take care as best we can. This is kind of a, a neat slide. It's uh, there's a lot more information behind the scenes on this one. But one of the things I, you know, talking I talked earlier about making sure that seed matures uh, when when we take that seed is just looking at a you know a transitic a green plant versus a ripe plant and look at the difference in the protein for one on, on something that's still green and looking at the protein that's been matured. A lot difference in that protein. Those proteins have a lot, a lot of energy. The zinc difference is, is, is huge and we know when zinc is really important for germination of a seed. So getting that the seed at the right time when we're pulling it from the field is, is very important. So I'm going to spend some a little bit more time on these slides coming up here, a couple of slides and and what you're seeing in front of you is you're seeing uh, lab results so we, uh, from two different uh, pieces, uh, two different uh, wheat uh, samples and two different barley samples and two different pea samples. So you, you've got on the left-hand side, you get all the different important nutrients that we talked about in that seed, alphabetical order. So it's easy for me to, to follow, which I appreciate. So some of the key things I want you to look on, and I'll highlight some of these things, but we talked about some of these key nutrients in, and maybe you've already looked at the at these and you can figure out which seed maybe has a little better value or a little better opportunity to uh, perform better in a field than the next one just by some of you uh, uh, people who've been looked a lot of time into this. But first thing I'm gonna bring up is phosphorus. So here's your two wheat varieties right here. Here's your two barley varieties. Here's your two pea varieties. <laughs> I think this is, uh, you know, kind of pick on the easy one, phosphorus. We know it's important in energy production. This, this might be a, a first start giveaway, but you look at the difference between new these two wheat varieties, quite a bit difference in, uh, in phosphorus in those two seeds. 
these two barley varieties, you know, there's a difference in those in production of, of the amount of phosphorus in those two. And uh, this pea variety see a similar mindset. Manganese, we know that's important and when it comes to uh, seed germination, seed vigor. Seeing a very similar story here once again. Very similar story. Lines up kind of nice with, with the phosphorus. Zinc, what do we see with zinc? Well, zinc on the peas lines up a little different. One thing that is, is interesting is, you know, peas contain a lot of zinc. Barley, you know, we see this barley two has more zinc than, than barley one and wheat one has more, more zinc than wheat two. What else do we notice on here? Boron, boron can influence the ability of that seed to be uh, structurally sound or not. So boron levels are all fairly close. Right. I highlighted calcium, and the reason I highlighted calcium is I think one of the interesting things that Mike uh, pointed out last time he, he talked to me about these is, is the amount of calcium in, in peas and, and how important calcium is to these pulse crops. And you know, the, even when you think of that mindset of how important calcium when it is when it comes to uh, creating nodules. So it is really interesting when you start looking at the nutrient values of seed, and, but there's some key factors when you, you pull back the curtains on, on the, the key elements that make seeds uh, good to great. So with that, we also send these same seeds, uh, you know, after, you know, I guess in the middle, we sent actually sent for the nutrient value after we already started doing the testing. But so we didn't, didn't know the end result, but here's the results of the germination and vigor of, of each seed lot. So the germination of, uh, Wheat one, 98% with a vigor of 85. Wheat two, germination of 97 versus vigor of 75. So germination, you know, we're working with fantastic seed here as far as, as germination is concerned. Vigor, however, is, is a little different and, and not surprising that there's some key elements that are different in that seed that doesn't show the same vigor. But go to the, the two barley, barley uh, lots, we have germination of 97 and germination 93. Difference in germination, but not still fantastic, over 90% germination. But vigor, uh, barley one has a 70% vigor, and vigor, the vigor on uh, barley two is 81. Well, lo and behold, we see the same kind of nutrient differences in that seed. Oh, the story continues. P1 and P2, we have uh, germination, both outstanding germination. Uh, vigor is is closer, but we uh, is still a difference in vigor. and. Yet again, that, that same story can be told. Those important key nutrients that provide that sound germination and great vigor is, is kind of a really cool story to tell. So it's, uh, and you know, these, are, these are seed that the farmer will use and uh, may see some difference in the field, maybe not if, depending on how close you look, but definitely there's some, some value to be lost if you're treating the seeds with those lower vigors the same as you're treating the ones with the higher vigor. So it's, it's just some, some mindset. So we took these, uh, two, these, these seeds and we spent some time taking it a little bit further. Let's look at uh, what happens with the vigor if you, if you take uh, something like the active prime, which I'll talk about later and, and, and see where it goes. So not only did we start with fantastic seed with, with high germination, but the vigor test that we use, as you can see, it's a, it's a root density test. And it, uh, two by 100 seeds uh, uh, planted and rolled in a towel and incubated at 20 degrees Celsius. So if, uh, if I was a farmer and I could seed uh, 97 plus germinated seed at 20 degrees Celsius, I'd be pumped. That'd be a pretty good end result if I could do that every single day I went out and seeded because it, you know, it's gonna get the best value from that. So the roots are dried and weighed. So what did, what did we find? We put, we put the seeds in the best possible situation to perform without any challenges in a lab, you know, germinating and growing at, at a at a great temperature. What did we see some values? So what you'll see here is you see the wheat, uh, lot prime prime one lot one and prime uh, active prime on lot two, and then no treatment on lot one and no treatment on lot two. And even even uh, the changes in lot one isn't huge. And you know I wouldn't I wouldn't expect it any kind of a difference in this kind of a, a setting with this kind of a temperature and, and germination overall, but we were actually seeing on, on lot one, not a lot of difference in, in total vigor root density, but 
lot too, we saw a substantial difference on a uh, significant difference. Uh, this is the reports back from the lab. Talking about this, you know, there is a statistical difference, significant effects from the prime to the treatment, and there is a, a statistical significant effect and in interaction of both too. So even putting these seeds in the ultimate uh, kind of a growing, we're still seeing a value in, and getting that nutrient value to uh, allow that, that seed to grow at maximum efficiency. So talk about taking that seed from good to great. Pea field, same thing. We got uh, the active prime on lot one and two and, and did it again, we did the root density on, on uh, no treatment, lot one and lot two. Once again, uh, prime lot one, we don't see a lot of difference. Uh, the proactive prime on, on lot two, uh, very large just the statistical difference. So it's kind of really neat to see the, the differences in the lab setting. And obviously, as we know, it's a little different out in our fields. So these are some really encouraging results. These were just done, uh, you know, and Mike's going to probably do a webinar later on to really dive into the differences uh, as we go through this. And we're doing some other uh, uh, testing and we're going to actually do some testing on some low germ seed to see if uh, what, what kind of activity with, with possibly a cold vigor test too. So just, you know, doing the opposite end of the spectrum to take it to where we would expect uh, Prime to have the, the best advantage. So, like I said before, um, we don't get the seed in 20 degrees Celsius, and and now not all our seeds are 90 97 percent germination. So, what does that seed run into? Even when it is a seed with that those kind of um, you know kind of a germination. So, seed stress. What are the things that your seed run into that kind of breaks down to? You know, we got fertilizers. We got fertilizer salts that'll hurt that seed. Try to draw the moisture out of that seed so it can't perform its best. We got uh, Bacteria, fungi, you know, we use seed treatment to help us there. Seed could have some mechanical damage. Um, soil nutrient availability of when that seed just starts. Uh, we talked about cold soil. That's that's kind of a an automatic when we're seeding in Western Canada. Excessive moisture could be a problem in some areas. Dry could be a problem in other areas. Salinity, there's areas in the field that are going to have some salinity and they'll always cause some issues for your seed. So it's a lot of things that that little seed goes in the ground that faces when you put it in the ground. So how can we help that seed? Other things that affect that, that seed, talking about a little digger, dig deep into that cold soil. So here's a, a chart that shows different depths of seeding. You got half inch, one inch, two, three, and four. And you got soil temp from five to 13, 20, 27 degrees Celsius. And then what you'll see in the black is the days to emergence. So seeding at a half inch depth, at a five degree soil temperature, takes about 17 days for that seed to come out. If we could take it right down to the other side there, four inches, five degrees Celsius, there's, there's times we've seen our seeds sit in the ground for a month. There's, you know, but if you're 27 degrees, half inch, three days, comes out in no time. So how often do we get the seed down in this part of the world? Not, not as often as we'd like to. Um, you know, it's kind of the mindset I used to work with the chemical company and I get a lot of times I'd get that question asked of me is, well, should I still use my seed treatment? Uh, you know, it's uh, June 1st and it's 24 degrees and the guy has, a, has an excellent lot of seed and it was, you know, it's, it's tough at that time. Do you still use seed treatment? You know, the conditions aren't as ripe for disease, uh, germination comes out in three days that that seed gets to start living off the soil a lot quicker. So here's a here's a really neat shot from Mike. It looks at uh, you know it's got basically uh, one centimeter out of the ground here. This little wheat plant has a head on it already. That's amazing. What a cool shot. So if, if that seed is having any trouble getting on the ground, it will affect this right from the start. So what else is affected by cold temperature? Well, everybody knows phosphorus is is a troublesome fellow when it comes to cold temperature. The first one that popped up, relative availability at 21 degrees, we call that, I guess, the, the check, the 100% mark where phosphorus is most available. Uh, if you go down to three degrees or anything under 10 degrees, it's about 20% 20, 20 available is what it normally would be at a 21 degrees Celsius. This is kind of a very similar graph here, but 13 degrees 
Celsius, it lines up quite nicely with this 13%, 31% available compared to 100% at 21. So phosphorus is tough to get to. If we have a seed that does what it needs to do, if we can do anything to help that seed grow bigger roots, longer roots, stronger roots, healthier roots, the opportunity to get that phosphorus obviously increases. So the other problem with phosphorus is it uh, doesn't travel a long ways. Either it is calcium, either it is magnesium, either it is K. And nitrogen on the other hand, he can move a little bit quicker in that soil. So getting that roots to these nutrients is crucial to keep that seed growing at maximum efficiency. Here's the old chicken and the egg. Plants need a well-developed root system to take up phosphorus. Plants need phosphorus to develop their root system early. So I just took a look at the time and uh, I had a grower actually phone me and said, you're going to talk in a half an hour? And he goes, good luck. So I'm, I'm going to try and speed it up here because uh, uh, I'm going to maybe go over my time and I want to make sure everybody gets a chance to see everything. So it's in a uses for biostimulants. Why do people put biostimulants in, in, in different types of products? So the idea behind biostimulants is they enhance, enhance plant growth development, increase yield and quality, they improve water and nutrient use efficiency, enhance resistance to abiotic and biotic stresses, Biostimulants uh, can be a natural or synthetic substance that can be applied on seeds, plants, or soils. In this case, we're talking about a biostimulant that's included in our active prime for seed dressing. So biostimulants do not act as fertilizers, fungicides, or insecticides. So they are not a replacement, but they can and help that out. So anything like uh, plant stress, for instance, uh, you know, you know, heavy, heavy heat, dry conditions, uh, the plant will start reacting. It'll produce uh, uh, reactive oxygen uh, scavenging uh, antioxidants that and so it starts the cells start to break down you also root growth uh, bio biostimulants can help increase the hormones to increase root growth um, I got a picture here some actually some active prime treated corn and uh, this is a cold windy day these plants were pulled and on the right hand side if if the, the sizes make sense for a mouse is that was treated with active prime. This side was not treated with active prime. And after an hour, uh, and yeah, I, actually I noticed it quite instantly, the, the side that didn't have the biostimulant, act, the, the active prime actually started wilting within within 10 minutes. And it was a cold, miserable day. And it was, uh, the plants were going through a, a hard time. So it's, it's, it's a, you know, talk about, you know, stopping that cell, cells from breaking down, stopping that, the accident oxidants from taking over. So it's, that's kind of an advantage you can get with a biostimulant. Here's a, a nice picture of a, a, a prime treated seed. And you can see where some of the, the prime ends up. We gotta have, have a coloring within the active prime and to make sure that you can see it on the seed. I'll dig a little deeper into the two products. But two modes of actions in our active prime. We have uh, the nutritional analysis, uh, which I popped up on the right hand side. Uh, you know, we didn't. The, the idea behind the, the nutrients in this in this product didn't come by accident. We know the key nutrients uh, as we went over the key nutrients that help seed germination, seed vigor, um, phosphorus, potassium, boron, manganese, and zinc. What we also have in it is is a synthetic biostimulant. And the nice thing about a synthetic biostimulant is it reacts the same, which can give you a lot more consistent result. And it's one thing that we've have really uh, found in the fields give us a consistent performance on the field with a with a strong nutrient analysis so provides phosphorus uh, to the to that plant we can increase that root development of that of that of that uh, seedling and the biostimulant allows us to maximize the genetic potential during talent challenging abiotic conditions other product that we have is active prime pls this product is made for uh, seed dressing that is designed to be very uh, uh, works great with live products such as rhizobiums, um, um, other other uh, fungicides. So it doesn't harm the fungus, the, the the biology on that seed. It works great in, in comparison. Uh, so it's got good synergy with the the bacterial growth. It's it's got a design that helps actually the growth of nodulation. So calcium, molybdenum, cobalt, nickel has folic acid along with our synthetic biostimate inside that. Uh, active prime. What are some of the things that uh, you know can expect from calcium? 
Uh, the reason the calcium focus on that active prime PLS uh, it decreases uh, the fixation in nodules. It actually helps attachment of the rhizome to the root hairs and also helps with redistribution to continue to grow more nodules. Cobalt is required in the synthesis of leg hemoglobin to actually help that that the nodule get nice and red and produce you know, break down the nitrogen so that plant can use it. Nickel is essential for root nodule growth uh, and hydrogenase activation, which is it's over my head, but that's very important for nodulation as well. Mike talks about it in depth on our on his uh, nodulation video. Use rates. So I, I'll get into talk about the use of the product. So it's great to have all this information about how it works perfectly, but what comes back down to some of these products is how they work and how they how is it hard to use or is it easy to use? And I guess that's been one of our huge advantages when it comes to the products is that they are you know they are very easy to use. Uh, you know, it's no more than the double the the rate of what you'd use for a a, a a seed treatment currently. So it's it doesn't make the seed too wet. It, uh, it it keeps it under eight mils per kg of seed, which is kind of a crucial spot you want to be in. Uh, once you start getting over eight mils a kg uh, per kg of seed, you can start getting the too wet. Uh, so Active Prime is 3.25 to four mils per kg of seed. Active Prime PLS, uh, due to the fact that uh, it's it's a little lower, two mils per kg of seed, which is great because a lot of times when we're using the Active Prime PLS, we're also putting on liquid rhizobium and some seed treatment. So there's a lot of activity going on around that seed. So having a, a primer that doesn't need as high as application is extremely important. So to keep that seed from being too wet and also keeping that bacteria alive. A few pictures of Active Prime in the lab. Um, do want to get into uh, the research? So uh, one thing I, you know, we talk a lot about it because I, uh, and I think we think it's we think it's really important is we spend a lot of time and effort and dollars on investing in these products, and we believe that, you know, we do a lot of stuff on farm too as well. Um, but we've been working with Active Prime for seven, six, seven years, Active PLS for three years, and we've worked with a number of different uh, companies to show how it works in in research setting. And the mindset behind research setting is, you know, it's not a lot of variability in the field uh, using high quality seed and how that performs in that kind of situation. So I'm going to show you a quick, few quick results. You can also check out our results on taurus.ag on, under each, under Active Prime. You'll see the results of the seed, these same results. So this is six years field studies uh, that we've done, wheat, canola, and we also have it on soybeans. You can check it online. So after six years, we're seeing a, a change and when we're putting these uh, trials in a fairly decent setting, we have, you know, the trials usually get seeded mid-May, later May. Uh, we use high quality seed. Uh, we All the trials will have a seed treatment on them. Uh, so it's we got good comparison with Active Prime. So the check would actually have a full full category seed treatment on it uh, versus the Active Prime, which would have the combination of the, the seed treatment and the Active Prime. So looking for, you know, a change of, of just five percent over the over six years. Canola, five point nine percent increase. Um, winter wheat, got a couple of years on winter wheat as well, seeing a very consistent uh, difference around that five plus percent. Uh, peas, we got one year of data on peas and lentils. Um, PLS got some neat observations with the uh, active PLS, and uh, we looked at different. Uh, uh, rhizobiums, and rhizo, cell tech, uh, did it by itself. So the top two on this lentil data here in Saskatchewan, we have the yield is just straight cell tech and N-Rhizo, 21 bushels, uh, N-Rhizo uh, with Cruiser Max Vibrance and Cruiser Max Vibrance pulses, uh, you know, 23. So we actually saw an increase with the C treatment. And then when you acted the, uh, the active uh, prime pulse, actually saw even a greater increase in Similar mindset throughout the peas in Manitoba and the peas in Saskatchewan as well. So it works very well. And we also have some data on soybeans as well in Manitoba. So bring this to a close. Uh, apologize for going over here a bit. Uh, I, I, I've, you know, I guess one of the things that I get asked a lot of times when I talk about these products, we have other foliars that actually go on the, the crop at the time of growth too, that 
that have a great fit. And one of the things people ask is, if I had a choice to, what would you do? Would you pick a seed primer or a foliar? Or what what would be your choice? And it's a tough. That's a tough question. It's it's tough not to automatically say, well, I have to go with the primer because that is the start of everything. And if I've missed on that, did I? Is it? Uh, do I have the same opportunity with anything else that I do thereafter? I I would say no, especially if I if I've tested my seed and I see that my seed is maybe got some disadvantages nutritionally or, or germination or, or other vigor, then I've, I put myself in a, in a spot where I don't have that true, true opportunity. Oh, when comparing, why we use, uh, you know, why would we use a fertilizer to grow a crop versus a seed? So what we get from, you know, putting that nutritional biostimulant package on that seed, we get earlier and greater root development. And I see a time of time, especially in those challenging conditions, it even gets better. Uh, Quicker emergence, stronger growth, uh, able to fight off stress more more efficiently. You know, that neat that picture of the corn that really showed the difference of uh, of the opportunity of that corn to fight off a tougher stress. Uh, greater potential to use uh, applied fertility. So if you got fertility in the ground, you got bigger root system, you have an opportunity to to grab that fertility quicker, faster. Earlier maturity, more even maturity. That's you know I guess they both go hand in hand. If I got a, a more even I get stuff comes out of the ground quicker and at the same time it's going to be it's going to mature earlier and then yield of course yield at the end of the day um, so how to make a choice how do i make a choice if taurus's products is the ones that i want and, and i got key learnings over the years of of doing these products is i guess i sell these products so i'm i'm going to have uh, you know a little bit different focus on but i i the reason i believe in taurus's product is kind of What's stated here is we've spent a lot of time researching, doing a lot of stuff on a farm, um, ease of use, uh, safe to use, safe seed, safe for seeds. Uh, you can leave on the seed for up to a year. We've checked and it has, you know, germination does not change. Uh, shows value on all crops tested. So that's kind of neat. It's got that, but not surprising considering we're focusing on the main nutrition that, that comes to the, to the seeds when it comes to prime and obviously the nutrition that comes to making nodules and active prime PLS. Patented stimulant, biostimulant makes a difference. Taurus consistency. We believe that this product is very consistent. It works very well. We're seeing consistency year over year over year, which growers have, who've been on it want to use it year after year because they've seen that consistency. Tags mix as well with other seed treatments, obviously key if you're, if you're putting on seed treatments. Um, you know, kind of a similar mindset, active prime complement seed treatments. So what that means is that actually I've had reps tell me that they've actually saw their seed treatment actually go on better and actually seems to dry a little quicker because of the just the, the makeup of active prime. PLS is safe for biologicals. Obviously, that's important if you're spending money on biologicals, you don't want them harmed. And prime marinating, uh, so key learning. And then what that talks about is that we find that we actually get better activity if we actually leave it sit on the on the seed for one to two weeks when we put the prime on and, and basically that nutrient gets to infusing right into the seed so you even get uh, a greater potential of the use of that of that prime and the mindset behind that is if i'm putting it on uh, the seed and i'm right away i'm putting it through my auger through my truck into my air seeder and into the dirt right away uh, all that activity we won't get as as much uh, uptake as we do if we do leave it on the seed even though a lot of our prime actually goes on very quickly because it dries so fast a lot of guys have no problem taking it and putting it on going to the field right away but we even see even greater activity on marinating these three have been uh, kind of what's made active prime and pls stand out is ease of use patented biostimulant and the consistency of the product those three have stood out to to work well and i will say the the financial and economic payback is high on uh, on these products, you know, putting it in the ground for three, four bucks an acre is with return is very exciting. Uh, just some little tools we have. We have the, uh, the calculator that you can get from your local rep, uh, working with to make sure you got the right amount of product that you're looking for. We have the capability uh, product uh, compatibility guide. We spend a lot of time looking at different uh, 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 treatments, to make sure that we're compatible. Uh, we also have the the active prime mixing guide <clears throat> we have a lot of people use the g3s so we make sure that we have the right rates to go on so we actually 
did the calibration on the G3, so it has a bunch of instructions on how to mix the product with the Active Prime mixing guide. Oh, 10 minutes late, but uh, I want to thank you for your time. I really appreciate everybody who's stayed on this. Uh, I believe in uh, making that seed as healthy as possible, and we need to spend time uh, looking at that seed a little more in depth and making sure we get the best value. I, you know, one of the comments I was talking to another one of the guys I work with is, you know, we see we take these seeds that we are also putting in the field to grow a crop with, but we give that to you know feedlots, and they take that seed and they actually will look at that seed and make sure that the nutritional value of that seed is if there's anything missing they'll have to offset those animals you know you know the importance of them looking at that seed and them recognizing it to feed that animals and and how important it is it for us to get that the best seed possible and there's some easy things you can do to make that that seed from better to great so thanks a lot thanks for your time you can uh, if you have any questions uh, you can reach me at quote at taurus.ag or phone me 306 Three six one nine zero eight five. Looks like a little spelling mistake. And please, if you aren't, please follow us on Taurus at uh, Taurus Ag Team on Twitter. We do a, send a lot of stuff out that way too. And the other things I mentioned early. Have any questions? I'll uh, Krista, who's the admin, will uh, administrator of this, will let me know. Yeah, we do have two questions in the queue. I don't know if you can see them on your side, if you wanted to answer them, or do you want me to read them out? Um, whereabouts am I looking? Questions? Let me oh. just read them out, then it's probably easiest. Sure. Uh, do you need to seed treatment for chickpeas on your active chickpea or active pulse? Uh, what was, uh, come again, I wasn't sure I totally got that. <laughs> uh, the question is, do you need to use a seed treatment for chickpeas? on your active chickpea or active pulse? So if, uh, so it sounds like they're asking if we need to use seed treatment still if we're using active pulse or active chickpea. Is that correct? Does that sound right? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if the only uh, uh, active uh, chickpea we have is a granular. So I guess I'll answer that in a couple different ways that uh, you still need to test your seed to see if you have a disease with your chickpeas. So I would recommend you test the disease in your chickpeas. Uh, you can use whatever seed treatment you want as far as we're concerned, because we have the granule. Uh, so we're not putting the, uh, our product on the seed with our, with our active chickpea. Uh, with active pulse, uh, if you are putting active uh, pulse on the seed, we actually have a, a sort of a, I guess it's no different to compatibility with active pulse on different seed treatments. Uh, we just have the powder that would go on seed. We don't have a liquid as of this time, but we do have a list of uh, compatible seed treatments with active pulse, which I, I don't have here. I apologize, but uh, you can do. And one of the things with, say with any kind of a, a bacteria or, or if you're mixing uh, anything directly with your biologicals, you should never have them in the same tank, but simultaneously is, is a lot of time is an option at the same time. But so, but it does depend on the products. There is some that don't mix well. Does that answer it, I think? Go ahead and yeah. ask the, that's the other question. Uh, we have one, if we have lots of wheat, barley, peas, lentils going in in April, will this help if it turns cool at the start of May? So the question is, uh, I'm putting a bunch of stuff in April and it's in the ground. You know, we looked at uh, the cold weather chart there. And so that seed, obviously, if it's not out of the ground growing, it's going to still be in the in sitting there. So is that going to help going forward? And I guess that mindset, I would say yes, because if, if you now have a seed, every seed that, you know, was going to make it through it, uh, you know, if, if it's a complete write-off, there's you know, we we can't help there. But if if you have a bunch of seeds that we're going to make it through, we will help uh, a bunch of those seeds with an active prime, active PLS, to actually increase that total germination because you'll have that much more seeds with the with the nutrition package to help battle through those times. So more phosphorus energy to battle through that time. Um, you know, more ma manganese, more zinc. You know, some of the crucial things that can help with that. So 
yeah, in my mindset, yes, it you definitely will have a better opportunity. And, and in some cases, even going back further, you may actually have some some seeds come out because you've you've actually primed it and you were able to battle through those stresses to get it out beforehand. And I've seen that happen. Uh, do we protect from frost if you know if you, if the crop is up and you've uh, put active prime or active PLS on your seed and you get a huge frost? Uh, we will not uh, not protect from that. Any other questions? Uh, has any trials been done in FOSS or nutrient deficient fields versus fields with high levels of FOSS or nutrients? Uh, great question. So if a uh, question is, is have we done trials specifically with uh, our primers on, I guess, uh, versus one field that has uh, low FOSS versus one that has, has higher FOSS? And uh, all our trials that we've done, you know, we've obviously done some of these things on the farm, but we've never actually take it down to uh, you know a comparison so it's that's a tough one to compare because if you have two different fields one with high FOSS one with low FOSS there's so many other conditions that can happen there that are we getting more value from the, the prime on that low FOSS field versus the high FOSS field it's it's tough to say if but I guess what we're really affecting is that that seed and its ability to grow uh, a great seedling so I would say on either condition, uh, maybe we would see more advantage on a low FOSS, but I would say even one of the things that we don't think about is getting greater value from that the fertilizers we are putting in the ground. And I've seen it a number of times that when we get that, um, if you use an active prime uh, or active PLS on the pulses, that I will see earlier nodulation uh, uh, side by side too, just because you got a bigger root system going after that healthier root system. And it takes that plant time to make that connection with the rhizobium to grow those nodules. So it takes time and energy for them to do it. And if you can speed that up and make that plant do its work, uh, that pulse do its own work. It's So uh, do I have an exact answer for you? No, I'm sorry. We don't have exact check side by side. Anything else? Great questions. That's all I have right now, unless anyone else wants to chime in and type one in. Hey, I really appreciate you guys getting on. I'm uh, I'm passionate for for this. I always I, I might be the Taurus uh, cheerleader for Active Prime and Active PLS. I, I think they're great products to you know very economically sound products and work work goods. They don't they're not a headache, which is fantastic. So it's it's something that you can use and you know it, it fits right into your system and it doesn't give you any problems and it it gives you a, a end result that you want, a positive end result. I could go on to a bunch of different stories I've had with farmers, but if you want to call me and hear about them, I'll, I'll let you know where it retails. All right. I won't uh, take up any more time. I really appreciate all you guys being on. I know a bunch of people have jumped off. Like I said, call me or uh, email me or uh, one of your local representatives and be happy. I could have probably talked for another uh, half an hour easy. So. I guess that that buddy was right. <laughs> so appreciate you guys taking time today, and once again, stay stay safe, stay healthy, and I guess uh, do what you can to enjoy as much of this as you, your life as you can right now. Because it's tough times. All right, that is it. Do I need to end something here, Kristen? No, nope, I'll take care of it. Thanks, Thanks so much. much. Take care, guys.